If one of your goals for 2021 is to live more organized, simpler, have less clutter and just general noise in your life, then this is the video for you. I'm going to go through 10 easy, affordable, basically free ways that take up very little time to keep your home and space clutter free so that you can focus on the things that matter most to you in your life. Hello, if you're new here, my name is Julie. I'm an occupational therapist, a mom of two little kids with one on the way, and I'm obsessed with keeping my home clutter-free and living an organized life so that I can do the things that are most meaningful for me, which is spending time with my children, focusing on creating and doing things that I love, and spreading the message that motherhood does not have to be miserable. In fact, it can be meaningful, mindful, and absolutely beautiful if we just follow some basic principles to get you back on track. So if you feel like an overwhelmed mom who can't keep control of this space, let alone the rest of your life, then definitely keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up if you like videos that help you improve your life. Click that notification bell and let's jump right in. As an occupational therapist, I've dedicated literally years of my life to helping people improve theirs. And one of the things that we look at as trained professionals is how does your space impact your quality of life? So how does your environment dictate how you feel day to day? Having lived this as a mom and a, and a person and also as a professional and seeing this with my clients and my patients, I can vouch for the fact that your environment and your personal space really, really make or break a situation for you. In other words, if you live in a mess and constant clutter and studies have shown this, you are so much less effective in whatever you're trying to achieve. Never mind the mental stress that we kind of just push under the rug and kind of ignore because we just feel like, hey, this is what life with kids is like, this is what a busy life is like. That's why I'm gonna share with you super easy practical tips today that will help get your life in order, get your home clutter free so easily. Two things quickly before we jump into the official tips, although these are tips within themselves. The first thing is that my mantra basically is less is more. And it really, really is. We live in this hyper consumeristic world where we're sold literally the idea that you need more and more things to be happy, but actually the opposite is true. The simpler you can go and live, the more free you will feel. The second thing is that if you identify as someone who is not organized or has always kind of been messy, maybe you were messy as a child and your room was never tidy, and then you've kind of carried this through into your motherhood and you've added more and more kids and it becomes more and more difficult to control, just know that keeping an organized home, having an organized mindset where you feel more in control of your space is a learned skill. Just like you learned how to ride a bike as a kid or you learned how to make your bed, getting your life in order and your home in under control is also something that can be learned. Don't give up on yourself if you feel like you were just not born with this talent for having everything alphabetized or color coded. All right, so tip number one, the first thing that I highly recommend is that as soon as you come home from anywhere, the grocery store, a vacation, a day in the park, it doesn't matter, unpack and put everything away as soon as you get home. I know it is so tempting just to dump everything, your keys, your phone, your shoes, your bags, your jackets, whatever it is, and just kind of get on with the rest of your day. But your future self will be so, so grateful if you just put everything away and you can kind of start off on a blank slate. And yes, even if you come back late at night on a vacation, if you can unpack as much as you can, that is awesome because when you wake up in the morning, your suitcase is basically done. I've had friends in my life that have kept suitcases unpacked for months, and I wonder how they can do that, but I know it's easy to just push that under the rug, forget about it and move on with your life, but I highly recommend you unpack as soon as you're done. I also talk a lot about the psychology behind cluttering your home and organization in my courses. I have a free mini course, feel free to download that down below, but also my paid courses. I have the Organized Mom. There's a lot of information about that down below as well. So make sure you click on that if you wanna learn more, but really there's so much that goes into why we keep stuff, why we hoard stuff, why we feel secure around stuff. Perhaps it's masking who we really are. We're hiding behind a nice bag or the latest fashion 
or driving the best car and why are we doing that who are we trying to impress make sure that you check out those free resources as well as my courses to help you if you need more support something else that i think people struggle with is that in this online culture of being able to click and order things and get food and clothing and items delivered so quickly we often don't return things that we don't need or that are wrong or this it doesn't fit or they no longer serve us make sure that if you are taking the time to order something online having it delivered to you and it is not right for you so many companies will just allow you to return that item the sooner you do it the better so that you don't lose money and you don't take up space in your home something else that can be super challenging but is so worth it is just taking 10 minutes at the end of each day after your kids go to bed or maybe while they're still awake as part of the bedtime routine to tidy up your space obviously the more people you can get involved the quicker this goes but set yourself a timer for 10 minutes and do a quick speed clean around the house if you struggle my number one tip for motivating myself to do this is to listen to an audiobook or music or whatever you like i like audiobooks and podcasts i've spoken about this a ton on my channel i find it so much easier to wash the dishes or quickly clean up the toys if i'm listening to something else and kind of distracted and this way i get my reading in and my home stays clean clutter free. Another key tip is to declutter during the in-between moments. If you're waiting for the motivation to start cleaning up your home or maybe going through a junk drawer or something like that, or you're waiting for the magical four hour window when you're alone and you just feel like cleaning, it's never going to happen. You have to declutter in between, whether that means decluttering while you're on a phone call or while you're waiting for the kettle to boil, something like that, and your tea is steeping, that's when you've just got to do a few quick things. What I like to do is if I'm going to clean a shelf or a drawer or something because it's looking really dusty, I'll just kind of do a natural quick audit and be like, hey, no one's played or picked this up for six months, or we haven't read this book in a really long time, our kids have grown out of it. Or I don't really like this sweater or jacket anymore. You know, I think maybe someone else in my family or my friendship circle might like it more than me. Just basic stuff so that it doesn't feel like you're taking an enormous amount of time out of your day to declutter the odd thing. I often talk about decluttering kind of in a health and fitness way in that it's simple. When you're first starting to declutter your home, if you're going through big, you know, purges of things, it's going to be easy to kind of select items that you don't need because it's obvious, right? But as you get more in control of your home, don't be alarmed if it becomes a little bit more difficult to declutter things or if you have to go back and do it a few times, that's totally okay. Decluttering is like healthy eating. It's not something you just do once. You eat one piece of celery and you're super healthy. No, it's something that you make a decision to do every single day. And when it comes to home maintenance and having a clutter-free home, this is so, so true. You need to be doing a little bit every day. If you're coming from a huge deficit of clutter where you really need to get on top of all your clutter, yeah, you're going to need to do a little bit more in the beginning to kind of get yourself into a good routine and momentum. Just like if you had to lose a lot of weight, say you had to lose 50 pounds or 100 pounds, yeah, you've got a lot to lose in the beginning and then as the pounds fall off, as the clutter leaves your home, it's easier and easier to maintain. In the same line, follow the one to two or three ratio, which means that if you're bringing something into your home, for every one item, try and declutter at least two or three things. Sometimes it's super easy and you can get rid of five things or six things or 10 things, but then as it gets more difficult, you might wanna just maintain at least a one to one ratio where whatever is coming in, at least one item is coming out. So this is a great rule to follow now during the holiday time when people are giving a lot of gifts. You wanna make sure that if you've received a whole lot of new things over the holiday period, that you have decluttered just as much and that has left your home. Something that I am super grateful for about living in a small space, we live in a two bedroom apartment in New York City with two kids and a dog and, and we're spending so much time at home now because of you know everything that's going on in the world. 
One thing that I am grateful for, even when I do feel frustrated about living in a small space, is that it limits me to how much stuff I can have. And that's so much more manageable for me as a person. So I would recommend, if you're struggling with the amount of things you have or keeping your home clutter free, that you use the natural confines of your home as kind of the boundaries. I don't recommend that people go and buy storage units or buy a bigger home to house their possessions because that means your possessions are really owning you instead of the other way around. Another thing if you're struggling to start, like where do I even begin? Do I declutter my bedroom, my bathroom, my kitchen, my kids room? Is follow the clues, which means that where you're having an area that you're really struggling to keep tidy, say you're trying to close a drawer and just nothing is gonna fit or you open a cupboard and everything falls out. That is a clue that that is an area that you need to focus on. That is a place where, you know, there's warning bells and it's telling you that you need to start taking back control of that area and tackling everything. If you are really struggling to let things go, and this is a process, this is an emotional journey, Think about why you might be holding on to something. What sentimental value does it have? Often it's easier to start with the things that don't have any sentimental value and so you get that cluttering muscle built up and it's easier for you to tackle those things as they get more challenging. I recently shared a video about how I keep and curate our sentimental items, especially for my kids, so I'll have that linked down below and up above here. But basically, I have a book where I keep all of the kids' kind of meaningful moments. I don't keep everything. I'm very selective about it, but this way it keeps our sentimental items to a minimum. And finally, this is something that I speak about all the time, but a really great tip to just keep your home clutter free is to try and ensure that everything has a place. If everything has a place, it's so much easier to keep it organized. And if you're finding it hard to find a spot for something specific, you need to evaluate whether that thing really deserves the real estate in your home or whether it needs to go. So those are my top tips down and dirty, get that clutter out of your home, keep it simple, keep your home organized and clutter-free so you can have a clutter-free mind for 2021. Remember, these are habits that you are starting and I know everyone's really focused on goals for the new year and all that kind of stuff and that's great and all, but if your home is in total shambles, if your environment is sucking all your energy and you can't focus on anything else, then I really think you need to start there. I think you need to start in your house, Heaven knows we're spending way more time at home than usual and it's important not to ignore the literal elephants in the room where you need to really get your life organized and in control. So as I said earlier, I have a free mini course link down below, super quick and easy, five easy videos coming from me as an OT, as a professional, with someone who coaches people <laughs> as a profession, as well as a mother who's had to kind of adapt to the increasing chaos that each child brings. And I'm anticipating more of that. I'm going through this journey myself. It is something that I do regularly. I'm always decluttering odds and ends, just little things, you know, that add up and it's not something that you ever really arrive at. So if you like videos like this of how to improve your life, how to simplify and live a more meaningful motherhood existence, then make sure that you subscribe, click the notification bell, give this video a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. I can't wait to see you guys back on my channel in 2021. Leave any video requests that you would like for me to do down below and I will see you soon.